Hi, this is Greg Koopman, and today I'm going to talk to you about the SSIS script component as a data source. Now, I've never really used this before um, because I've really had no reason to use it. Um, but in um, a recent scenario I came across, um, we were bringing in data from a source, let's say out on the cloud, and uh, that source would not allow us to do anything but read data from their databases. Um, we couldn't write back to the database. Uh, so it limited in this, and we read from a store procedure. So the store procedure was doing some um, manipulation with temp tables. And SSIS was, not, was drawing errors because of that. Uh, when I wanted to do, you know, like an export, um, or rather use it as a data source and a data flow, uh, we we generate errors, uh, and it wouldn't let us do it because we didn't have any rights to the tempdb. Um, I believe that was why it was causing the errors. So our only way of going around this was to dump the data from the store procedure into a uh, object variable okay in SSIS then read from that object variable um, into into the data and do an insert uh, well what we what we started off doing was doing a for each loop which would go through every row and pull all the columns into variables and then push those into the um, with a SQL task within the for each loop um, but when we did lots and lots of data, that got really, really slow. So instead of doing it that way, I decided that we'd use the script component, which allowed us to, um, instead of doing all those iterations with the for each loop, we bring it into memory once in the data flow into that um, script component, and then push it from there into the um, into the destination table. So what I'm going to show you is a really simple example of how this was done and the code used. So first, of all, let's look at the table that we're going to use. And the table in the store procedure we're using is over here. Um, so we use table number two. This is a very generic. And if you look at the design, we have first name and last name. OK, so that's the table. Our dest it's going to be our destination table. Our store procedure, which is also about as simple as it can be. So the, in this store procedure, you'll see that we put two records in. Okay, we're pulling two records that we generate uh, out of the uh, off the uh, on the fly, and uh, we're going to dump those into that table. Okay, so we come out of here. So that's the store procedure we're going to call test two. So we're going to come back out of here, and we're going to go into a into a SSI, a simple SSIS package I made. First of all, I'm just going to show you I truncate table two, all right, and then we select data, and that data we're pulling in from the test two store procedure here, and there we're going to we have a variable which is of object of the data type object right here call that test data all right so that's the variable name so when we run the procedure here we output it to a full result set and that result set is over here which is test data and that's the object variable we had had so we, we dump it into that variable after that we go into it so let's say we have in this case we only have two records but we can have two million records so there we go from this position here and we go into the data flow and the data flow is where I have my script component okay now I'm going to show you the end result of the script component and that is um, I have well let's go to the inputs and outputs first basically I create the two columns right I don't have to name them the same as the column names that I named them in my store procedure um, because I'm I, I as long as I have the same similar data types right here so I have column uh, 50 and column 50 uh, for string and also here this is uh, I name this whatever I want to this you're going to see this later in the code 
script component data. Take note of that. I can name it test data. I can call it anything I want. Um, but I do have to match it up when I go to the script part of this. So the script part, as you see, I, I'm pulling from the test data as my read-only variable. Okay? So that's that date, that test data is where I had the result set of the stored procedure, those two rows. In the edit edit script um, is where the all the magic put is put together. And when that comes up, we'll take a look at that. So here, what you want to take a look at here is the we're using the part of the script component called create new output rows. Okay, and one other thing by default, you're going to get namespaces, you're going to get the system, you're going to get system data, you're going to get the pipeline wrapper and the runtime wrapper. But what you need to add is this using system data Olay DB. Okay, so you do that and you come down to the, the procedures. There's some other uh, methods that I deleted out of here because we were, I wasn't using them just to simplify it, and I use this code create new output rows and we do a, we create a, a data adapter uh, create a new one and then we can create the table all right and then we fill the table with that variable called test data that we had you know read into this script okay so that's going to fill this this object um, with all the table information then here we do a for each loop and we just go ahead and we script um, we we put into the data buffer uh, at each row okay so the first name and last name go into the two columns of each row and we go through that and by the end of the whole script we have a full um, data buffer full of the data we want to input into our table okay so that's how simple this whole process is here now um, so I'm going to exit out of here. So that's how the day, the, the script task is set up. Um, and then my destination is in the table two that I showed you before, right? And I just map out the column one and column two to first name and last name. And then it goes right like that. Okay. And so this is replacing another option where we would do a for each loop with the uh, one insert at a time uh, into an execute SQL command. Um, and this should be much faster. Um, okay, so if you wanted to also see how that script task is made from the beginning, um, what you do is you would go into your uh, SSIS toolbox, you come into other tra uh, common transformations, and you come down to script. I already got it created, but I'm just going to show you how it looks when you start it. So you have your script component here, right? You drop it on, and there it is. As soon as you drop it, it asks you, do you want it to be a source, a destination, or a transformation? Well, I want it to be a source, right? So I'm just going to fill this out real quick, but we're not going to use this one. So there's a source, right? And then it drops it just like that. So when you open it, okay, it looks like this. And that's exactly this one, right? Same thing, but I have this one already filled out. So just to look at how I filled it out, again, you have your read-only variable. That's your test data. That's your object variable type. You have your input outputs. And under connection managers, you don't have anything because it's already in memory. It's in the object. You go into input outputs. You go to script, and then you map some sort of column to each one of the columns in order uh, that they're coming in and that they're, they're being presented. So here's column one, that's going to be first name, that's column two. I could call this first name, I could call that last name. Okay, and lastly, what you're going to do after you do the columns and you tell it what uh, read-only variable object uh, variable you want to read in, then you go to edit. And I'm just going through this real quick again just so you can see how the this code looks. And um, so you go into the code, and again, the difference is here. Uh, is that you add this using system data OLADB down over there and then inside of your create new output rows that's where you add in this code here okay and as you see I'm mapping these this code here column two and I take the data row here you do need to name the name it the name of the column 
okay so that's important here so um, and that's it so let's just run this guy get rid of this guy here and I'm going to show you first of all before we run it well, let's let's just show you how that that the, the truncate data works so it's going to execute that singly okay okay so if I go into the table I look at uh, table 2 which is the one we're putting it into I selected there's no data right so I go back to the SSIS package okay I'm just going to run this execute package truncates data it selects the data it calls that store procedure like what I talked about goes in the data flow you notice there's two rows that come from the script component down into the destination um, destination and that's where the table underscore two is okay so I come back over to the here rerun my select and now we'll see two rows okay Greg Koopman and George Washington uh, maybe not in that order all right well thanks for watching I hope this helps you bye